Um, I'm Konstantin, and I'm here to talk about real-time REC. Uh, up front, I have to say this, uh, you'll see a lot of code in this presentation, so if you're easily offended by code, you should leave now. <laughs> um, before I get to re uh, REC, I'll talk a bit about me, so you get to know me. I'm from Germany, and I'm on, I have a blog, I'm on GitHub, like probably everyone else of you. I have this... Um, extremely long Twitter name, so it's probably best to just go to my blog and click on the URL to Twitter, so you don't have to type that. Um, I'm mainly still a student at university, and I work part-time as a Ruby developer. And I love code. I love code so much I put it in nearly every slide, even the second slide about me. So um, if you check me out on GitHub, um, I'm currently uh, taking care of the Sinatra gem. Um, you guys probably have heard of it and um, also lots of other gems you guys probably haven't heard of. And I'm regularly contributing to Tilt and Rubinius and stuff like that, Rec, and I also spent like um, the last summer working on, on Rails for Ruby Sum of Code. And if you check out my GitHub page, my most popular project is called Almost Sinatra. It's a Sinatra clone in eight lines of code. And um, yeah, just wanted to include that the, I um, don't know if you saw the um, literal criticism talk for Rubius, it was a great talk, it really had to, really reminded me of this project, it, it's just some nonsense I did and it became super popular, it was like for two weeks or so it was trending topic on, on GitHub, but just crazy. And, and there were actually some people um, that didn't get that it's a joke, that actually, <laughs> asked for me to, hey, can I combine that with fibers so it will scale automatically, stuff like that. <laughs> so, um, um, who of you has seen the talk about Event Machine by Matthias? Good, good, it will probably be helpful. So if you saw that, then you'll probably um, notice a slight difference to my talk, so um, yeah, I've no memes about that one, and, and I included it to create a paradoxon, so you, um, if you're like, uh, thinking about the paradoxon all the time, I'm sorry. Um, yeah. So, REC. I'll tell you how to use REC for stuff it's not meant to be used for. Um, so if you, if you take real-time web responses in Ruby, uh, all the talks I've seen, or most of, most of the talks I've seen so far just deal with, um, here's this awesome library to use it, to use, um, and I'll tell you how to use it. And this is not what this talk is about. I'll tell you uh, what mechanisms the, the libraries use under the hood. So uh, I first have to make sure you understand what rack is. So, but why do you want to do, you want to do this? Uh, if you're building like a rich, rich internet application, like Twitter or so, where you, uh, where you have uh, constant updates coming in without having to reload the page or other sort of interaction, you, you want to avoid polling um, the, the updates. You even want to avoid long polling, which is a technique, um, it's also known as Comet, where you just uh, fire a request and, and it doesn't, the server doesn't respond until, until uh, something happens, so you're not like polling every second for for uh, for updates. And um, this is the basic idea is to si uh, to decide from the so I'm talking about the server side like most of the time. And from the server side, the um, the important technique is to just start streaming to the client, and then while streaming, decide what to stream, not upfront. This is the basic principle of uh, real-time HTTP uh, communication. And you can use that for like streaming APIs, like the Twitter streaming API. Some of you probably have seen that. And um, then there's one thing that is pretty uncommon at the moment still, unfortunately, that's server sent events, and of course WebSockets. I'll go into detail about the, those two. So I'll start with the demo just to, to uh, show what's possible. Um, all of you should be, all of you should be familiar with um, this little thing. You should know it from 
Ruby development where you can just go like, oh, one plus one, yeah, that's too cool. Um, yeah, and yeah. Um, so this example is using service and events to um, to so the uh, my presentation is using show off. I don't know if you guys have heard of it. That's um, by one of the GitHub guys. It's a presentation tool where you basically um, your presentation is a website and it's served from from a rec server. It's written in with Sinatra, so. Uh, I ha basically have to use it, and, and I'm I'm using server sent events. So I'm this is basically just an input field. You see the completion, and I'm using uh, I, I just post it to the server and use server sent events to stream that in that in back at me, and and that's completely evented. Uh, so nothing blocks the event loop. Um, short demo. So this is just going on until I stop it, so. There we go. It's, and it's all triggered from the, from, the, um, from the server side. So that code is actually executed on the server and streamed back to the client, which is, yeah, I kind of like that. So I hope all of you know, at least have heard about REC. REC is like, the protocol specification on how a, how a web server is able to run a Ruby web application like Rails or Sinatra. And any web server that speaks, it can actually run a Rails app. So like I've used Passenger here to, uh, um, and Passenger just speaks Rec and can run Rails and Unicorn can run Sinatra. And even Sinatra can use a Rails application and you can like build crazy, crazy trees of applications where they just hand on the, uh, the information. Um, and um, yeah, this is um, this is the start of the of the middleware tree for the current presentation. So as you can see, I have the I have the example embedded into the into the rec middleware tree, and that's why it's just being served from the presentation. Um, I'm just going to go through this uh, quickly so um, to 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 make sure we're all on the same page here. Uh, so this is the basic rec application. Uh, a rec application is any Ruby object that's, that responds to call. Call will be called on it with a with an, with an env hash. That's a normal Ruby hash containing stuff like HTTP headers or other means of communication. And it has to return an array with three elements. The first one is an integer for the status code. The second one is a hash of headers that will be returned to the HTTP client. And the third one is an object that responds to each and will call for, will yield the block that is passed to each uh, for strings that will be sent to the client. And um, you can write it obviously simpler in Sinatra. This is basically about the same. Um, it really doesn't do much more, but check in the path. So I'm gonna use use Sinatra just to show off how cool it is a few times in, the, in this presentation, mainly to, to uh, reduce the code on the slides, because, yeah, to show what's important. And you can write your own middleware. This is a stupid little rack middleware that you can chain in front of your Rails application that will uh, take the, uh, the, the response body and just make it up, all uppercase, like in the comment above. And it does so by uh, calling call with the env hash on, on the application. You chain it in front of it and then loops through all the, uh, all the strings and, and, and upcases them, yeah. And I could have used map, but that would like violate the rec protocol because uh, I can't just assume it's an array. Yeah. That's how you really would use it, and like in config.ru, if you've ever seen that, it's like in your Rails 3 app, there's one, and yeah. And this is what the server would do. It would like pass the incoming HTTP request, create a hash from it, and uh, for all the middleware, it, 
creates an instance of that middleware with the with the app it's wrapping as parameter and then just calls call and from the result generates HTTP. This is really important to, um, this is the basic thing we have to trick because there's no, uh, there's, it doesn't intend you to, to do streaming and, and real time stuff at that point. So, but ha the, cause the main thing is, um, it's actually doing a, it's processing the request, handing it to your application. Your application is then generating a response and the web server is from that generating the real HTTP response. There's no way to do, to do, um, to send just a bit and then later on just um, make up your mind and send something different. But there are, there's uh, streaming built into Rack. You can stream with the method each of the return body by just returning any object that, uh, that implements each and, and, and yeah, yields strings for that. Um, this REC application would actually uh, 20, um, sleep one second after every, every, every paragraph with the current time in it and, and do that 20 times. But there are issues with that. Ah, I come to that later. Um, um, and you can use that to do, this is pretty stupid because you could just generate that, you know up front what's coming. Um, um, let's build a messaging server like, imagine we are doing an app appli an, a chat application, a website or something like that, and, and everyone, everyone that's going to the website should get a an, an push notification. Uh, we could do it like this, where basically we have uh, two, two routes, two actions, where uh, one where we create this magical subscriber object and, and just store it for later. So we have one subscriber object per, per open chat connection. And then if someone just posts data to the server, uh, we'll just use the message um, and propagate it to all the subscribers. And the subscriber is pretty easy. It would look something, something like this. Um, uh, basically, it's about the same like the, uh, like the first streaming example. We have a sleep and, and the yield with the string. We just sleep for an indefinite time until someone decides to wake us up and then just we'll send the, we'll send the line we're supplied with. Now, if, you, if you're doing a lot of, uh, programming with concurrency and so on, you'll already notice that this isn't really the a really good thing because it blocks the current thread, the sleep call. Um, it assumes that you have one thread per, per uh, incoming request, which really doesn't scale because creating threads is expensive, having threads in parallel is expensive. And it does not work well with middleware. Remember the middleware where we uh, where I upcased everything. If you if you do that, it will wait. It will actually call each before handing the response on. So, uh, with the with the twenty times uh, twenty lines example, it will actually take twenty seconds until it reaches your web server, which then can propagate it to the client. And with the with the chat example, it just will never reach the web server because you just keep the connection open indefinitely. And it doesn't work like at all with evented servers like Thin Goliath app and Rainbows, because um, the the uh, it will just uh, pile up the um, the events uh, the 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 data sends in the event loop, but you'll never reach the end of the event loop because with the sleep you are blocking the event loop. So what we really want is evented streaming. And this isn't, this isn't part of REC. This is, if you take just the REC specification, this is impossible. But Thin and uh, Rainbows and the other servers expose an API for that. They have an asynchronous callback feature, which um, allows you to, to uh, do the whole thing 
asynchronously and you will have an event loop where yeah, if you already know um, you already know about this from the event machine talk you have the um, all the connections are coming in and the it's events in the event loop and the callbacks are fired which is the root processing and and you just have to register new callbacks instead of blocking which is web scale and it looks like this in this example we're we're we are trying to uh, we if if uh, the client sends a uh, request we keep it waiting for 10 seconds and after that 10 seconds we are sending our response but we we are able to answer other requests in the meantime from the same process from the same thread because we we have queued it on the on the event loop by using the the asynchronous callback which is basically just a proc or a method object we can call call on again with the with the uh, rec response and the the tricky thing is we have to tell the web server to not respond yet to just keep the connection dangling until we decide to respond and there are two ways to do that one is with throw don't know if you guys have ever used throw it's like um, raising an exception but it's not an it's explicitly not an exception so um, you can catch it somewhere with the catch method I'll show some code in a minute and basically you can implement your own control structures like break and next with that and um, this will skip all your all your middleware so you uh, eliminate the issue with the with the uh, with the middleware that's like like the upcasing middleware that's blocking your uh, your connection by just throwing that right at the at the web server and the other way is to return a status code of minus one this actually will go through all the middleware but it works well because like nothing bad happens if if the if the upcasing middleware calls each on this empty array and a status code of minus one tells the tells the web server that you you are going to respond later to that the main issue with this approach it, it's far nicer this approach because your middleware can if you have middleware that is logging requests the 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 requests won't just disappear from the log they will still appear and and stuff like that but the main issue is that uh, rack will complain about this in development mode since minus one is an illegal status code so you have to either run in some other environment or you have to monkey patch Reclint, which is pretty easy but ugly and yeah again you can do this easier in Sinatra there's a Sinatra async gem by or async Sinatra is the gem name by James Tucker which just uh, gives you this a get and does all the asynchronous response stuff for you and this is this is somewhat what uh, the rack handler will do it will pass the incoming request generate the end hash from it it will set up a callback that will then in turn actually generate the http response uh, wrap everything in a catch so you can just leave the the execution oh, my, my, it's gone. and and yeah just call your application and if your status code is not minus one, it will trigger the uh, the the HTTP generation. This is pretty close to what Thin and App do. I'm not sure about the others. I haven't looked at the code, but this is basically what, really what's in there. They're using methods instead of procs, but you get the idea. But that's actually not streaming. That's that's postponing. We don't want to send uh, the request after 10, uh, so we do want to, to, to send the request after 10 seconds. Well, keep in mind the timer could also be not just wait 10 seconds, but actually wait for like our Redis backend to answer or anything else via a request to another website and then use that response to generate our response. So how can we do the streaming thing? Because if you would like 
if we, if we would return the subscriber object from earlier again, we would be blocking the event loop, which we are trying to avoid. If you've been to the Redis talk, he already mentioned uh, event machine deferrable, which uh, can be used to register callbacks, can create an object that has the callback interface. And if you return uh, a deferrable object as body, um, the server will actually wait until it succeeds. So a um, um, deferrable object has three states where it hasn't succeeded yet and the state where it succeeded or where it failed. You can register different callbacks for that. So we have to modify this code because it's not, it hasn't integrated the, the asynchronous um, handling yet. So the asynchronous version would use a get, for example, and we don't have to return a string here because we the, the return value doesn't really matter. Um, yeah, but that's about it. The question now is, how would the subscriber like, look like? Yeah, it's pretty simple. We create just our own deferrable object, and instead, in, instead of calling the block pass to each, we just store it for later. So we can call it any time, and any time we call it, uh, the string will be sent to the, to the HTTP client, like this. And we no longer block anything. And to close the connection, we just have to call succeed on, on, the, on the body object. And one use case is service and events. You've seen it in the demo. Service and events are used like this from the JavaScript side. Um, they're actually built into WebKit and they're coming for the other browsers. And they're like a one-way web, web socket where you just stream from the server to the client. Uh, you can't write on them from the client side, but yeah, you can just fire a new AJAX request for that. And they don't need a pro protocol upgrade. I'll come to that in a minute. This is a really big issue with, with web sockets. They are resumable. That means if the connection is lost, they can be, um, um, they have a built-in functionality to recognize at what, what point you actually lost the connection and, and start streaming from there without you having to write basically any code for that. And you can actually implement them in JavaScript for modern browsers. I think you can't for Internet Explorer 6, but you can for, for Firefox back to, to something, so there's no reason not to use them if you just don't care about Internet Explorer 6. Yeah. And they degrade gracefully to polling, so if, yeah, that's the way you could actually use them in Internet Explorer 6. That's related to this resumability, but then again, we're trying to avoid uh, polling, so you probably want to use Flash or something else in Internet Explorer. And this is the complete uh, server-side implementation of such an event socket. It's pretty much the same uh, as the implementation you saw before, but it ha has just um, a bit of metadata. Um, one data element is prefixed by data, and, and you send an empty line in between. And, this, and you can add an ID. This is used to resume Yes. Um, if we have time, I can show you the, the, the code of the, of the uh, web IRB session afterwards. And then, finally, there are the glorious web sockets. They're like two-way event sources. Um, web sockets have major issues. For one, the client needs patching. It needs to be aware of, of uh, protocol upgrade, so you can, web sockets don't rely on pure HTTP. They they add features to it, and you have these upgrade headers. And um, the server needs patching. The server needs to be able to uh, to use the the to also perform the protocol upgrade. And all the web socket implementations that um, bring web sockets to rack, they actually patch thin or rainbows or so on. Moreover, the proxy needs patching. HA proxy isn't able to handle WebSockets. That just doesn't work 
because of the protocol upgrade again. And REC needs patching. Because even though there is a way to, um, to stream from the server to the client, it um, doesn't work well with the other way around. And it has major security issues. That's why WebSockets are disabled in Firefox 4 and Opera, so it won't work on most browsers. You use it like this. And you might be saying, wow, I know this. This looks pretty much like this. And yeah, that's true. You, the only difference mainly is that uh, on the client side, you also have a send method for the WebSocket, so you can actually send data. And you can use it, for instance, with um, the EM WebSocket implementation. And you basically have the exact same protocol like on the client side, on the server side. And one last uh, method for streaming is the uh, speedy protocol. It's actually created by, by Google. If you have a decent version of Chrome and you're browsing a Google service via HTTPS, it's actually not using HTTPS, but speedy instead. Um, it's a modified HTTPS version where they actually send multiple requests over the same SSL connection. And the fun thing is that you have this SSL connection already open, so why not do pushing over it just um, as soon as you have app updates? And, and Google is currently doing that. For instance, if you're uh, on, on Google Maps, they're using push notifications, I think, and for Google Mail, stuff like that. There's an, some uh, thread and articles about that, how they're using it. But the, the main issue is there's no Ruby implementation so far in making use of it. So you can't use it now, and it's only supported by Chrome. But this is an interesting thing, because the, the HTTP protocol sent over the SSL connection is basically still the same without the protocol upgrade. So um, I was intentionally keeping this a bit shorter so I can go at the code and demo that a bit. And um, yeah. So the um, the code is rather short for my live demo. Oh, the color scheme sucks. Um, Dan, how do I change it? Uh, he wrote the editor. Mac Classic. Oh, Mac Classic. And Yes, this works. So here's the, it, the this uh, event source implementation is exactly the event source implementation I showed before. With the yeah, it's 100% the same, and I'm doing also about the same I did in the demo. I keep a list of subscribers, and also I keep keep a line number. I this is the the number of the like for error messages. So if you in the live demo. If you produce an error, uh, it actually contains a line number, which is increasing, and I use that. Uh, I just count it up, and I use that also as an ID for the resumability. Um, the browser is using that to, to recognize if a line has been sent two times. Um, yeah. Apart from that, it's basically the same. I have, I have to keep the binding so I can actually access local variables. Yeah. So to make this work, I have to use the same binding over and over again. Yeah, and I implemented the same method, uh, basically to do the timer thing. Apart from that, this is... Um, the complete implementation is including the in, including the templates. It's about 120 lines, including new lines and and CSS and the JavaScript. I actually use CoffeeScript. And yeah, all I do is just um, execute the code, 
capture the output and if there's an error, display the error and just um, propagate that to all clients. That means if I open two sessions, they will share the, the same, same IRB session actually. And yeah, the, the, the uh, client side is also pretty easy. Uh, it's, um, this is mainly for just output and input stuff. I have a form and I, I just intercept submit form submits and instead do a post manually and uh, refocus. And yeah, here's the, the actual code is here, down here. So I think I'm, I was rather fast. Um, so if you have questions to the code, I can show you anything or if you have uh, other question or I could tell you more about any part of the talk. No? Okay, in that case we have like 13 minutes left, a bit short. Okay, then. The monkey patching for the linter. I don't have an example right now, but I can go into rec. It's basically like one method. Where it checks the check status and uh, the search is that the status must be bigger than 100. And if you do something like this, <laughs> it will just work. <laughs> so, any more questions? Um, you probably don't want to use this uh, directly. You probably want to use a library, but I find it rather important that to understand what's going on under the hood. Um, and people often pop up in IRC that ask questions about this because there's um, next to no documentation about this. So there's uh, this documentation that you can use, async.callback, but um, apart from that, so the like the deferrable thing, I had to figure that out from, from reading the CRAMP code. CRAMP is an asynchronous web framework. It was already mentioned by Matthias yesterday. Yeah, so you have to do pretty much of digging to, to find those solutions. Yeah, so you can use something like Socket.io that uses WebSockets if available. If not, it's uh, degrading to, to service and events. And if that's not available, it's drawing Flash and Silverlight, I think. And if that's not working, it's degrading to, to long polling. So that's a nice library that wraps it. I think there is uh, there are Ruby bindings available. There's the client-side JavaScript and there are there's a server-side implementation for Node.js and I think for Ruby. Yes. Yes. Just was mentioned that Nvidia uh, before started to work on a Ruby implementation. Oh, cool, cool. He also did the EM WebSocket implementation, I think, <laughs> and was mentioned yesterday a lot. Yes. <laughs> That's the same guy. So, any other other questions? Okay, um, thanks. My slides are available on GitHub.